Can you believe that back in 2014 when I first started these Halloween and Christmas Lush hauls that my first haul video was 6 minutes and 52 seconds long, fast forward 3 years later, and this video is probably a hell of a lot longer than that. My love for Lush's Halloween and Christmas range has just grown exponentially over the years. I have something in my eye. It might be bath bomb dust. <laughs> if you could see my floor! You'd understand. Now before we start this year's Lush Halloween and Christmas haul, I just wanted to let you know this video is not sponsored in any way. Lush don't actually sponsor anybody to talk about their products. Um, Lush are kind enough to send me some things occasionally, but everything you're going to see in this video I have bought myself because I am a few slices short. I just get excited, okay? Is it really the start of the festive season if Emma doesn't do a Lush haul? I don't think so. Let's start off with the things that I got from the Halloween range. Now this is not the complete range, this is most of the range, but uh, I went into the Oxford Street flagship store, there were a couple of things that weren't in stock and uh, there were some things that I must have just missed. Um, and there were also a couple of things from this haul where I just, you know, from the range where I just, I wasn't really, wasn't really feeling them. I will never buy rose jam. Don't make me buy rose jam. I don't care how many years you keep putting out rose jam, I ain't buying it! Anyway, let's begin! Now when you think of Halloween at Lush, you probably think of one particular product, so we're gonna start with that. So first up, as always, Lord of Misrule has made a comeback. This must be like the 17th, 18th year of this thing. Now I don't want to start off this haul being negative, um, so I'm just gonna state Lord of Misrule is not my favourite product, it's not my favourite scent, some people absolutely adore it. Jen. But you know, it's it's okay for me. It's uh, patchouli, vanilla, and black pepper, I think. And I only know that because I've said it for the last four years! Now there hasn't been any change in shape or scent or anything uh, from last year or the year before or year before that. It's just a staple. They don't really change things up. Bright green in colour, it's got the zigzag pattern going all the way across it. It just smells exactly the same as always, um, which I'm not disappointed about. I think a lot of people would be very outraged if they changed the formula for Lord of Misrule, so <laughs> playing it safe this year, which I can respect. I'm just, I'm still not sure whether the Lord of Misrule bath bomb is supposed to have these like pink and white uh, spots on them. I can't remember the actual name for that, I think it's called Blooming? or something like that, where the moisture in the air sort of creates these sort of moisture spots and brings the colour out. Um, but they were all like this in the Oxford Street store, so it was either because they were all out, or they're supposed to be spotty. I don't know. Wait, I have a laptop. Laptops will tell me. It is not supposed to be spotty. So, make sure that when you go into your local Lush store, you try and pick one from the bottom of the pyramid, you know? They don't like you doing it. But those are the fresh ones! And of course to go with that, again making a comeback, is the Lord of Misrule Shower Cream. Again, not a huge fan of the scent, in fact, I don't- that's- that's- I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. Let's just- let's just ease you back in there, shall we? Okay. I will say, um, either my nose is broken, or there's just not much scent to this this year. Oh, oh no, like the top bit, this little hard bit. That shouldn't be hard. Yeah, underneath you can smell it. Um, it doesn't have as much of a strong scent. I would say there's more vanilla in the uh, shower cream, whereas perhaps with the bath bomb there's definitely more patchouli going on. But yeah, this this is okay. I'm not, again, I'm not a fan of the scent really, um, and I'm also not a fan of shower creams. So that's why I only picked up the tiny bottle, just to get me through to show you guys. But I know that so many of you guys absolutely love the scent and you love the shower cream, so, you know, I'm, it's each to their own, man. I just, you know, I, I just, I can't help but feel like this would be better as a shower gel. Even as the new naked shower gel, maybe. I just, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the cream, you know, it goes everywhere. Let's continue with the ones making a comeback from last year. Um, this is the pumpkin bath bomb. If you guys remember, this is the light orange one that is shaped like a pumpkin with a little evil face on it. You know, that one. This scent has actually grown on me. I don't remember liking this very much last year, but yeah, that's, that's, that's quite warming. So one of the main reasons that this is so warming is because it has a lot of cinnamon bark oil in it. It also has, and I didn't know this, pimento berry oil. And of course a hefty dose of vanilla absolute. So very warming, very, very cinders-ish to me. Um, not like, not really in terms of scent, but more, more in the, I'm going to shut up, that makes no sense. So yeah, very warming, very earthy, very nice. I like that one. Carrying on with the products that are making a comeback, we once again have the Monster's Ball bath bomb. Now, this one, seems a bit sturdier this year. When I was sent this last year, um, it was very crumbly, and I think his eye had fallen out or something, and to Lush's credit, I complained in a video, and 
much respect to them, uh, they sent me another one. Um, don't think for a second, I don't know how lucky I am for that to happen. Um, I'm very grateful, I'm very fortunate. But this just feels a lot sturdier this year. It feels like it's not gonna crumble. So I don't know if it's just more densely packed this year. Might not be. Maybe they've just left it alone and this one just isn't very stale. But yeah, he feels pretty firm. Now, of course, just like last year, um, his eye is a little bath melt. So that's fine to just go in the bath. It will just disappear and make the water a bit softer. And this bad boy smells like lime oil, neroli oil, and olibanum oil. Not that I know what olibanum would smell like on its own, but yeah, very limey. Lime and neroli go together very well. Hmm. It's a very clean smell. Yes, you've got that hint of lime, but there's something about um, neroli that, that is just very clean. Obviously, anything that you stick in the bath, you want it to smell clean. But I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know. It smells like a really, really nice laundry detergent, okay? That may not sound convincing, but believe me, I'm not very good with words. It's very nice. I just can't help but feel like Lush won't appreciate me saying it smells like laundry detergent. It smells of lime, okay? Shush. Another repeat from last year. I don't want to touch this one. Hold it by the tips of my fingers. This is, of course, the sparkly pumpkin bubble bar. As soon as you touch it, gold glimmer will just go everywhere. It's got a cute little bit of what I assume would be a cinnamon stick in there, just as like a little stalk. I didn't notice that from last year. That's very cute. It smells very... I don't know if I like that. No, I do like that. I do like that. Sparkly pumpkin supposedly smells of juniper berry oil, lime oil, and grapefruit oil. Now, I don't really notice any lime. Like, in that monster's ball, I could smell the lime. I can't smell lime in this. So perhaps it's more just juniper berry, but um, yeah, it's quite sweet. In fact, it's very sweet. Oh, I'm gonna just put this one down now. See? Everywhere. And our final repeat from the Halloween range is the Goth Fairy Massage. Shimmer bar, it's a shimmer bar, not a massage bar. I am her. Pretty sure this came out in 2015 and 2016. Might be wrong, but isn't she just adorable? These solid naked moisturizing bars are made with a base of nourishing fair trade cocoa butter. They are designed to melt at body temperature. So glide these bars straight over the body or warm between your hands first, and then massage the beautiful oils into your skin. There you go, very shimmery, melting in my hands. Eh, wait, wait, no, I gotta smell you. You smell very nice. Oh, that's very nice. These things work great after you just had a bath. You just sort of rub it in and you get like lots of glitter on your skin and you know, it's been a while since I've done a haul. Leave me alone. Yeah, she smells of Elipe butter and Kupuasi butter. If you know what either of those things smell like on their own, then you can envision this. If you don't, you just have to go into a store and smell it. I'm sorry. I will say don't do what I did when I first got a massage bar and do it in the bath. It's a very bad idea. I didn't know what to do with it. This is like four years ago. I was just sitting in the tub and I had like the snow fairy one they used to do and I just rubbed it and it just made my skin waterproof and it was a really bad idea. So don't do it when your skin's wet. Do it like after you've like toweled. Oh my God, a glitter just went everywhere. Am I made of glitter now? Whoa. Just do it when your skin has been like towel dried, you know, or get someone else to do it for you. Although I'm not really sure Halloween is a romantic season unless you get someone who dresses up as a witch and sort of my mind went to a very odd place. Anyway, let's look at some newcomers for the Halloween range. There's only three, uh, which I'm quite disappointed about. I think there is another one that I somehow missed or it wasn't in the Oxford Street store. And that was the pink pumpkin bubble bar. But again, I don't have that with me, but it, it looks like, it just looks like the pumpkin bubble bar, but pink, so. So let's move on to uh, this bubble bar, brand new this year, haven't seen it before, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you are a cat person like me, Is it is adorable? This is the Bewitched Bubble Bar. Bewitched. Black Cat. Witch. I would have called it Salem, but it says on the website, this is blackberry scented. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't do it. But in this you'll find bergamot oil and olibanum oil. Doesn't look like there's any blackberry ingredient though. So not, I mean, maybe I just don't know my oils, see I don't smell blackberry at all, but it is a very dark, I say dark, I'm just looking at it, aren't I? It's like sweet and woody at the same time, and I know that does sound like blackberry, but I promise I'm not getting any blackberry in there. But when I have a bath, blackberry sure is going in there. That was awful, that did not land. Anyway, I can only presume this is gonna turn your bath a lovely black color when you run it under a tap. I feel like this would go extremely well with the Dark Arts Jelly Bomb that they have, which I don't have to show you, 
because I used my last one. I don't know if that one is a Halloween exclusive or whether that's just an uh, Oxford Street exclusive, but yeah, they have a, a jelly bomb that is dark black in color and it's named after the Harry Potter. It's great, it's really good. I really like the jelly bomb. Speaking of, this is the ectoplasm bath bomb. Now, I was very fortunate. Um, I think I made a video earlier in the year when I went to the Lush showcase. The Lush showcase. Did I make a video? I think I did. And I showed you guys the uh, ectoplasm bath bomb as it was. However, it has changed a lot in the last seven months because this is what it looks like now. Just like the other jelly bombs, it is now uh, circular in shape. Spherical. Sorry. But with one little exception to all the others, it's got a little ghost on the top. Look at how cute. <laughs> it's very Snapchatty. I like it. But yeah, same colors as before. Um, definitely less breakable. If you guys remember um, the video that I made, it was just crumbling everywhere. Um, so they've definitely perfected the uh, the shape of these jelly bombs. Well done, Jack. Good designing. And uh, just these are just great. If you've never used a jelly bomb before, oh man, you're in for a treat. I think they're absolutely wonderful. Some people don't like them because they don't like the texture in the bath, but basically when you plop these in like a normal bath bomb, uh, they'll still fizz just like a regular bath bomb, but um, I, I believe it's, um, it's, a comp it's a compound from seaweed that is in these. It might be carrageenan, it might not be. Okay, no, it's sodium alginate. Um, so basically the sodium alginate in this comes out um, and it it's like a jelly-like substance that floats on top of the water. So the water underneath is just pure, normal, you know, colored water that looks great. And on top, you've got this like foamy jelly bath-like substance. And um, after about 10 minutes or so, it just melts and becomes like regular water. Um, but for those 10 minutes, you can just rub it on yourself and it softens your skin and they're just absolutely great. And you don't have to worry about it clogging up your bathtub, or at least I, I don't, because uh, in the hot water, it eventually melts. So um, I really, really like this. If you're feeling ghoulish, the uplifting tangerine, grapefruit, and restorative Litsy Cubia oils, Cub Cubiba, Cubiba oil. What? What is that? Cub Cub Cubiba. Cubiba, 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 Cuba. We'll have you in high spirits in no time. Take the gunge, get it? Gunge. Ah, oh, does anyone remember Dave Benson Phillips? The gunging on the TV. No one knows what I'm talking about because I'm far too old. Anyway, um, yeah, I would say, um, I would say tangerine and grapefruit. It's definitely like a citrus smell. Um, not a really, really lemony citrus smell. Yeah, it's tangerine. And finally, from the Halloween range. This isn't actually on the website, so I can't actually provide any info to you. And the only reason that I think it's part of the Halloween range is because of the name. This is the Hedge... Hedge... The Hedge Witch Soap. Hedge... Hedge Witch. Hedge Witch. Like Hedwig, but not in any way. Look at how absolutely gorgeous this soap looks. Look at this marbling in there. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Now, there were quite a few soaps um, that seemed to be new and exclusive. Um, I didn't actually pick that many up, just mostly because like they're expensive and there's only so much soap you can get through. Um, even if you're the cleanest of beavers, don't say clean beaver, whatever you do, oh my God. But also like, I didn't really like all of the scents, but this one, this smelled really good to me. It's very different. Um, this is unlike any other scent that I can recognize from Lush. Oh no, this is a Christmas soap apparently. It's on the website, that's why I couldn't find it, because it's a Christmas soap. The main ingredient is honeysuckle flower infusion. How was I supposed to know what honeysuckle smells like? Oh yes, that is so obviously honeysuckle. Cocoa butter, coconut oil, um, mandarin oil, petit grain oil, gardenia. Maybe that's what I was confusing. Some people said it smells like fresh red berries. Maybe? Maybe? With mulberries and blackberries, soothe and refresh your skin with your very own concoction. So actually, it was on the website, but for some reason, Hedge Witch, Witch, is part of the Christmas range. Uh, don't really know why. In days of old and times that are lost, there were Hedge Witches. They made remedies for any number of ailments and healed many afflictions with ingredients that they gathered from the hedgerows and woods. I maintain, if you name something after a witch, 
It has to be a Halloween product. It smells really good though. Um, so if you know what honeysuckle smells like, then this was a complete waste of your time. But that actually ties in nicely because if this is a Christmas product, that means we've already moved on to the Christmas range and oh God, we have a lot of Christmas stuff to get through. Now, you know what? When it comes to Christmas, to me, there's only really one bath bomb that's very synonymous with Christmas for me. When I first had this bath bomb, and I've told this story before, um, I first fell in love with it back in 2000, and I wanna say late 2012, might have been late 2013, whichever one it was, uh, once I truly fell in love with it, I ordered 30 of these bath bombs, and that is when I found out the hard way that it's very difficult to get through 30 baths with the same bath bomb and not be very bored. <laughs> but every year when this bath bomb comes back, I'm just filled with joy because it's one of my favorite bath bombs of all time. The smell is amazing. What it does to the bath color and glimmer wise is incredible. But this year, well, let's just say it's a little bit bigger. They do have regular sized ones, but this is a 12 pound 95 version of none other than the Golden Wonder. <gasps> look at this, look at this thing. It's so big. Now Lush have recently been doing these giant versions of the bath bombs. Um, they've been very choosy between which ones. There was a Mother Earth one. I think they did, I can't remember like, uh, I think the big blue uh, was made ginormous in the kitchen at one point, but um, I'm so glad they chose to do this for Golden Wonder because it's by far one of my favorite bath bombs of all time. This is gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to disappear in my bath. And I'm so happy right now. It smells amazing. Oh, oh no. Okay, um, well, I guess my pajama bottoms are gonna be very, very itchy tonight. Yeah, it's part of the Celebrate scent family and the scents you are going to smell when you put this in your bath are sweet orange oil, cognac oil, and lime oil. Now, I know it seems like Lush is just a huge fan of lime, okay? And they're, they're right to be. But it's something to do with the cognac oil that just makes it very inviting and very festive. Okay, now the rest isn't really gonna be in any sort of order. Um, I'm just gonna pick them up and talk about them as I grab them. Um, and there's a lot to get through, so I'm very sorry about the length of this video, but but, but, but Christmas. Let's start with a couple of shower products, simply because they are the closest to me. Once again, making a return is the Bubbly Shower Gel. Now this supposedly smells the same. They're supposed to be in the same scent family, um, the, uh, the Golden Wonder and this. I don't know, I haven't smelt this in a while. I will soon tell you. They're nothing alike, absolutely nothing alike. So this was a staple product uh, last year. Not sure about the year before, but I know this was definitely out last year, I remember it. A celebratory cocktail of sweet orange and lime oils. See, it sounds like it's the same, but there's a very, very big difference. This is far more orangey. Whereas I would say that the bath bomb focuses more on the lime and the cognac oil. This is definitely more of the orange oil and it is delicious. And this one was actually made by Nev, who is uh, my favorite compounder because his sticker just gives me so much joy. But Nev, who is not watching, Nev, you make so many products that I love because you're always my sticker and you're my favorite. I like you very much and you're very appreciated, Nev. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your surface nerve. So yeah, this is of course a shower gel, so it's not gonna be all different colors and stick to you. And I just don't like the cream, but this will not take long for me to get through and I'm very excited to use it. Speaking of creams, this is a brand new shower cream for this year. Making its wonderful debut, everybody, is the Santa's Christmas Shower Cream. It's very, very similar in color to the Prince Charming Shower Cream that they do on Valentine's Day. Well, they used to do it. I don't know if they still, they do do it. They did it this year, didn't they? Did I not do a Valentine's haul this year? I didn't, did I? What is wrong with me? Anyway, this smells like vanilla and lime. It's a little bit like cola. Let me have a look. Was I right? Please tell me I was right. It's got lime oil in it and lime juice. Hey, but it's, it's got loads in this. Cocoa butter, almond oil, coffee infusion, cinnamon infusion, lime oil, aniseed oil, black pepper oil, fresh lime juice, fresh orange juice. Do you know what? You need to lay off the lime and orange now, okay? I would let you off, but this wasn't made by Nev, so. It does have a very, very slight hint of like, cola at the end. I think it's the lime oil that sort of tricks your brain. But to me, it smells just a little bit like vanilla Coke. You know, and I love vanilla Coke, so I'm not complaining. I'm really surprised there's no vanilla actually in there though. 
but it is very, very nice. But yeah, once you use it, it's gonna be a very, very bright red in colour. It's gonna, you know, never leave your skin. Of course, like for a lot of people, the shower creams wash off and the colour doesn't really stay, but me just doing that and it's it's just, it's just, we're just in trouble now, aren't we? Lush, if you could just, if you could just go back to making gels, that would be great. And whilst you're there, if you could make the grass shower gel again, that would also be great. Anyway, enough complaining. It does smell very nice and it does smell a bit like Christmas, I guess, because you associate like Coke with Christmas and lime and all that. I don't know, but it's very nice. Up next, we have the shower jellies. Now, I'm not gonna spend too long talking about these because I'm pretty sure I've spoken about these for the last maybe three or four years, especially this one, which is also made by Nev. This is the Snowman Shower Jelly. Now, I know that this was a product mentioned in my first ever Lush Halloween and Christmas haul in 2014. So this just keeps on coming back, you know? Thank you, Nev, love you, Nev. This, however, this year, just looking at it, is very watery. You can actually see water moving about in the tub this year, which I don't remember happening last year. But anyway, this, uh, I believe, sh uh, this one shares a scent with the carrot family, so if you're a fan of the Easter products, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. Carrot, snowman, get it? Carrots. And I can't open it because it's wet. That is the problem with these shower jellies, it's just water will just leak out of them. They're never dry pots. Come on, you son of a- I cannot get this one open. So I guess I'm not getting this one out. Holy cack. Why? <laughs> Maybe this is never coming out. Oh, never mind. I did it. Let's try and maneuver this out without dropping it and soaking things everywhere. Okay. Excuse me. This is the Snowman Shower Jelly. This has been around for many, many years. You will have seen this in all of my uh, hauls to do with Christmas and now my hands are getting extremely soapy. Basically, you, you just rub this over your body in the shower and it produces lather and I'm gonna put this away now. But it's shaped like a snowman and it smells like the carrot family. It's very, very, very delicious. Like, I don't wanna make a big deal, but, but you gotta work on that, Lush. That's, that hasn't happened before. That's, hmm, anyway. Uh, I need a towel. <laughs> Next up we have the Santa's Belly Shower Jelly. Again, another return. I think this again might be the fourth year. It might be the third. Um, but this one has definitely been featured uh, many times before. This one is spilling everywhere. This one is in the shape of Santa's belly. There's his little belt buckle. Um, there's a lot of gold glimmer. Uh, to represent the gold belt buckle, I guess. But it's a very, very cute sort of shape. Um, you can just hold it, rub it, and it, oh. Oh, I'm having flashbacks, sorry. Basically, I have one real, real issue with Lush when it comes to their Christmas range. <laughs> and uh, Hannah over at Lush PR will know what this is. A f that wasn't me, that was the jelly going back in the pot, I swear. A couple of years back, Every year for Christmas, Lush used to do a shower gel and it was called So White. And I always recalled it as one of my favorite scents in a shower gel ever. It was white in color, smelt like this, fresh apples. This is fresh apple scented, by the way, I didn't say that. And then, from like last year, they just stopped. They just stopped selling So White shower gel. Maybe the numbers weren't doing so good, but it was my favorite. And now you can maybe catch it in the kitchen, you know, one time before Christmas. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. The, even the So White bath bomb didn't make it through this year. That was around last year. Not this year. Um, they're just killing off the So White brand and they shouldn't because it's great. But anyway, yeah, you can still catch the scent family with the Santa's belly and another product, which I will show you in a second, but I'm, I'm gonna go get a towel. Do -do 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 -do. As I was saying, there is a new product that is also belonging to the So White family, which is, when I say So White, I just mean apples. I love apples. <laughs> I really love apples. And that product is this. This is the Once Upon a Time Solid Body Lotion. Yep, there it is. This doesn't smell as apple-y. It's definitely got like more hints of like butters and things like that, but then I suppose it would because it's a body lotion. This is made of cocoa butter, muru muru butter, apple infusion, shea butter, Japan wax, spring water, perfume, elipe butter, kana, kan, kanuoba, kan, kanuoba wax, grapefruit oil, lime oil, Sicilian lemon oil, jojoba oil, jojoba? 
Jehovah, Jehovah's Witness, Almond Oil, and some stuff I can't pronounce. But Lush is really focusing on taking packaging away from things. This is, in general, Lush are really focusing on getting rid of um, packaging. And they've started to make a lot of their products solid. So instead of obviously just like, you know, having a great big plastic pot and sort of, you know, dipping your fingers in it and then running it down and having to give the pot back and then getting another pot of face mask back, etc. Um, we're, we're using less plastic now, which is awesome. And this will work just like any other lotion. So, you know, anytime you wanna just soften your skin, that's it, that's how you use it. You just saw me do it. God, that smells so good. Oh, now I've gotta do it the other side. I just feel like this is more encouraging for me to, to start using lotions because I don't like sort of, you know, taking things out of a tub and, you know, never feeling like you're getting to the end of it. But this, you can just directly just rub it on yourself. I think I would get more use out of this than I would um, an actual like lotion tub thing. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely filled with butters that just melt um, when they come in contact with your skin, which is wonderful. Believe me, I am a huge fan. They're pretty expensive, but when you remember like how much that you get out of like a tub and think about that price comparison, actually, this is probably gonna go a lot further. So I recommend this a lot. Mostly because it smells of apple. So continuing on with the solid lotions, I have another two products for you guys. This one, now this is a scent that you might know. When you think Christmas at Lush, there's one scent that most people go to. I go to Golden Wonder, but a lot of people will go to one with this color. This is the Snow Fairy Solid Body Conditioner. Now, I think last year, um, at least in the Oxford Street store, they did a Snow Fairy Body Conditioner, which you just you know used out of the out of the tub. Um, I'm not a massive, massive fan of the body conditioners. I find them quite hard to use. You're supposed to use these in the shower, I believe, and that's what I've been doing wrong. So you know how like you shampoo and then condition your hair? Well, it's supposed to be like use a shower gel or something, and then a conditioner. Um, I never really got in the habit of doing that, and maybe I should, but same principle, smells of Snow Fairy, probably will go a lot further. Although I suppose if you're using it in the shower, then it's gonna melt more under the hot temperatures. So maybe keep this away and out of the bathroom uh, in between uses. But yep, it's got that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you, you know, and I've said this before. I think Snow Fairy is pretty overrated for what it is. I know a lot of people only go to Lush for the Snow Fairy, so they go once a year and it's the only one they want. But to me, there are just better smells. This is so sickly sweet, but I think as a body condition that I can just use in the shower, um, this could be quite good for me. This could be good. And another solid body conditioner they have is called, I'll tell you in a minute. If we can just ignore the chunk that just came out of it because it flew out of the packaging. Um, <laughs> this is the Bucks Fizz solid conditioner. Now this, uh, just like the last one, using the shower after you've used shower gel, etc. It just smells so good. It smells of oranges. Bucks Fizz, you know, orange and champagne. Mm. It smells pretty much identical to the bubbly shower gel. So you could use the bubbly shower gel uh, just to wash yourself and then just use this. You are gonna smell like a cocktail, my friend. This is already melting in my hand. This one has a, uh, definitely has a lower melting temperature. There must be a different proportion of butters because this one is now dripping. Um, which is not a good thing. So I would say definitely with this one, um, keep this out of the bathrooms, um, you know, in between uses. Keep it out of the way of heat, otherwise you're gonna end up like I did when my full of grey serum was left in the sun. It just, it just becomes a puddle. I won't even clean up that bit that's now on my floor. I'll just use a hairdryer on it. <laughs> now, let's, con while we're on the subject of solid things, let's, uh, wait. let's continue on with Three new products. Now, I mentioned to you guys previously that Lush are doing this new thing where they're just trying to reduce packaging. Um, they held um, a great big event recently, another sort of showcase. Sadly, I had to miss it. I was on my book tour or I was like doing stuff towards the book tour. I was busy that day and I was really sad about it. But yeah, they're, they're making this 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 uh, really big deal right now. And it's a good thing, uh, like a big deal of reducing packaging, reducing plastic. Um, thinking about, do we need this to be in a bottle? Do we need this to be in a tub? So their new answer to that problem, to the, uh, to the environmental wastage, are these. Now, on the surface, these look like soaps. However, they are not. These are naked shower gels. They got a cute little wax. You can just get rid of that. That's not, you know, but it looks cute. So we're just gonna leave that on. It's basically all of the ingredients of a shower gel, but just 
solid. So Emma, what's the difference between this and a soap? Well, on the surface, so I'll be real with you, not much. But you know how like when you have a bar of soap in the shower, you know, and you're, you're, you're rubbing it and it's just, it's not lathering up. You're getting some bubbles, but there's no lather. These things, you run these under the shower and your hands are covered in, in bubbles. It, it just lathers very, very quickly. That's the main difference. You can just use soap. I sometimes use soap with like a glove or something, but you wouldn't need to with this. You could literally just do that. You'll get bubbles and use it like that. I think this, for me, would go a lot further than a normal typical shower gel because I'm I'm quite hedonistic in the shower, you know. Uh, when, when I flip the cap of a shower gel, I'm like, until I get a great big mountain in my hand, you know. Um, so with this, I know I wouldn't need to do that. So uh, this is the Snow Fairy one, by the way, if you couldn't tell. I didn't actually see a Snow Fairy shower gel bottle. Maybe they're just coming at a later time, or maybe I went blind. I didn't see it in Oxford Street, I saw these. I don't think they're gonna do away with the shower gel. I can't imagine that they would do away with the liquid version because it's so popular. But I would suggest to anybody um, to give these a shot. Um, try these out, see what you think, and let me know in the comments below, because I, I want to know your opinions. Do you find it easier to use one of these? Do you think these go further? Or are you just more a fan of the liquid-based um, format? Not much else to say about it other than it smells of Snow Fairy. You'll know what Snow Fairy smells like. If you're watching this video, you know what Snow Fairy smells like. This is another Naked Shower Gel. This is called the Berry Berry Christmas Naked Shower Gel. It is a brand new scent for this year, at least I think it is. And you know what? It smells of berries! However, let me look it up real quick um, so that I can give you guys a better idea because clearly, as we found out today, my nose is not working recently. So it would appear that there is also uh, a shower gel version of this that I must have somehow missed. Um, Thinking about, I think this was actually at the front of the store and I missed it. So yeah, there is a normal, regular shower gel version and the naked version. Though the frost may be cruel, warm up with a walk in this winter wonderland of cranberry infusion and fresh blueberry juice. What does this remind me of then? Because there was another one that Lush used to do. Don't rain on my parade, was it called? No, it doesn't smell like that. It was the same colour though, I think. But yeah, cranberries and blueberries apparently, and wild orange oil, because they just love their oranges at Lush right now, which is fine by me. Smells good. I like that. It's very festive. It's not really, really sweet. It's not that overpowering sort of snow fairy. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's like you're going through a walk in the woods at like dusk or something, and the sunlight's hitting the snow on the branches. I don't know. It smells like that, you know? Good. I like that. Now, we're gonna have to talk about it and you're all bored of me talking about it, you might have noticed that there was a purple one. Oh boy, what do you think this smells of? Oh wait, it smells of the best smell ever. This is, again, of course, a Twilight Naked Shower Gel. This, I may just never use this. I might just frame it. I might just put it on the shelves up there. Screw it, could work very nice as an air freshener. I don't know. The great news is, again, I think this is like the second year in a row, uh, maybe the third year, they've actually made Twilight uh, readily available in shops for Christmas, the normal shower gel version. So if you've ever wondered what that smells like and you're sick of me just always talking about Twilight shower gel, you can go into a store and find out for yourself now, as well as picking up a naked version. This is gonna go so much further for me, I think, than a regular shower gel. Oh, it's lavender multi-goodness. Lavender. Tonka, vanilla, oh, the best, the best combination, the best thing that Lush do. If they just made a variation of Twilight scented stuff, I'm talking like soaps and scrubs, you know, they make lotions, but you know, everything. They also do a dusting powder, at least they used to. I don't know if they still do, but I have one up there and it's great. Where's the Twilight bubble bar? You know, the French kiss thing doesn't really count. I'm greedy. I want everything Twilight. I want my funeral to smell like Twilight. You know, it's possible. Bathe my corpse in this smell. It was my life and it shall be my death. Anyway, moving on. Next up, because it's closest to me, this is the Bouche de Noel Fresh Cleanser. Now, I don't know why I picked this up because I really don't like this product. I think I got excited and I was like, I gotta do a haul. I just grabbed it in my panic, sort of like supermarket sweep, just sort of scooped them all up. It's like marzipan. Oh, it's almonds. That's almonds. Am I right? Hang on. Ground almonds is the main ingredient. Ugh. Ground almonds, fresh mandarin, dried cranberries, cocoa butter, almond butter, almond oil, just, just almonds. Brandy, you know, I kind of would need to get drunk to enjoy this. But it's kind of like cup of coffee, the, the scrub. I hate the smell of coffee, but 
I like that product so much that I can overlook that and just use it without really thinking about the smell. Maybe this will be the same. I just, almonds is one of my least favorite smells in the world. Um, but it looks like, let me show you properly what this looks like. Kind of like this, it's got um, like a bit of, it's not, I don't want to say seaweed, it's it's some sort of like the thing that they wrap it in, but it's got like little gold luster on it this year, which, ew, it's very cute. I'm gonna put the lid on that now. Sorry, I need to remove the smell of almonds from my nose. There we go. We're slowly getting onto the more fun stuff, the, the bath stuff, but just bear with me. Let's go through some of the Christmas soaps. Now I say some of them because there were a couple that I didn't pick up because I, I've got more than enough soaps now and I wasn't a massive fan of them. Um, the ones I didn't pick up, I mean, these ones I thought were great. Let's start off with this one. I believe this is brand new this year. This is called the Golden Pear Soap. Tell me if I'm wrong, by the way. I don't remember seeing this last year, but I might have just not looked properly. So the Golden Pear Soap looks like this. Uh, it's like a pear. It looks like it's got some sort of butter, maybe like cocoa butter or shea butter in there. Um, it looks like two halves that are sort of, it's kind of like the um, bubble runes, but soap. Smells delicious. It does smell like pear. Maybe I'm just saying that because it looks like a pear and it's named pear, but it, it pretty much smells like pear to me. I feel like that is gonna be so, so softening. What I do like about this is it's uh, its own portion. So you don't have to go up and be like, oh, can you cut me off this much? Um, you can just pick one of these up. I think that is great. And I think more Lush soap should be like that. I don't like that it's like a deli, like a cheese cutter kind of thing. I like that you could just go in pick this up and be done with it. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Their description of this soap is as follows. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a jar of pear puree, moo moo, butter, warming cardamom oil, some agave syrup, Brazilian orange oil, organic cocoa butter, a drop of almond oil, five golden things, sandalwood oil, creamy coconut, a whole organic clove, are all part of golden pear soap. <laughs> Well played. <laughs> I swear, if they play that in the offices this year. Oh no. It smells very nice. I'm gonna never sing again. Next up is the Snow Cloud Soap. I can't remember what this looks like, so I'm gonna have to remind myself. Oh, I remember now. It was like a sort of, um, not igloo, but it, it looked like a cloud, kind of. Snow Cloud, makes sense. Actually, do you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't like that at all. <laughs> what is that? Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm not, not, <laughs> not a fan of that. Holy heck. Marshmallow root. Doesn't smell like Prince Charming to me. Kaolin, cocoa butter, coconut oil. Don't smell any coconut. Neroli oil, orange flower absolute, rose, rosewood, sandalwood, ylang lang. Um, hmm. Uplifting orange blossom absolute and neroli oil will cheer you up in no time. I do not smell either of those things. However, I do smell sandalwood and I think that's what I'm not liking. Comforting rosewood and warming sandalwood. Mm, it's very, it is very woody. It, I like, um, the, the dudest of dudes could, could use this very comfortably and not worry about smelling like the wife. Um, not here to enforce gender roles. But you know the, the type of guy I'm saying, you know? I don't want to smell like a chick. You could use this if you're one of those people. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely a unisex smell, that one. Um, uh, hmm. 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 This one, I, I just like the title of this one. The Christmas Citrus Soap. So at least, like, there's no guesses here. <laughs> like, you know what you're getting into when you smell the citrus soap. Oh, it smells of citrus. I'm shocked. What kind of citrus though? Lemon? Lime? Maybe some grapefruit? I don't know. Lemon is the primary ingredient, followed by lime oil, lemon juice, bergamot. Yeah, it's lemon and lime. And it's, 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 there's not much to be said about it. it it's citrus, you know, the smell of lemon and lime together. It's, it's that. It looks gorgeous though. Like, look at that. Like, that is so vibrant. I love that. I think that's what sort of, uh, really attracted me to it in the first place. And finally for the soaps, finally? Yeah, finally, finally, we have the Shooting Star Soap. Now, I can't remember if they had this last year. They may well have done. Um, I don't remember it, but I wasn't really into the soaps last year. I feel like they did have this, but maybe it wasn't called Shooting Stars. Maybe it was called something else. Um, remember the one that looks like this? I remember seeing it. Um, maybe it was called that, because I think I've only just got through the last little slither of this. So maybe it, maybe they did have it. Maybe it was maybe it was called that. I don't know. 
Yeah, I've smelt that before. This isn't new. This is not new. This zesty lime and lemon oil soap feels just as good after lights out as it does before nights out. Lemon oil from Groves of Sicily makes this soap a fantastic wake-up call. Hmm. Lime oil, lemon oil, star fruit puree. So, you can guess what that smells of. However, it does smell very different to that one. Give me a second. Okay. That's more citrus, that's more tangy. That's got like less of a sweet note at the end, whereas this is more fruits, like maybe it's the star fruit puree or something. They both smell of lemon and lime, but in different ways. I don't know how that's possible. You know what, I'm not, I'm not an alchemist, I don't know. Let's carry on with a new type of product for this year. Now these are called sparkle jars. Now these are brand new. I don't know if they're coming to every store, but let me tell you, they're quite clever. So this is the Twilight, Oh yeah, Twilight Sparkle Jar. Now what you're supposed to do with it, this is um, this is like a solid uh, body lotion. These solid naked moisturizing bars are made with a base of nourishing cocoa, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So it's basically, it's a solid moisturizer. You rub it on your skin, as normal. It melts, you smell of twilight, you're having a great time. Then, up here are two dots. Now what you're supposed to do, is shake, yep, and there's a little bit of uh, glitter that comes out from the middle, and then you rub it in, and then you have glittery skin. It's very gimmicky, but I think it's really great. I don't know if like, you're supposed to pierce these little holes, because they, they look pretty blocked up to me, but yeah, you can, you, yeah, no, 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 whoa, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, it's coming out the sides, and yeah, it's not like the most secure uh, thing, but as you can tell, you know, you get lots of powder, rub it in quite firm, and then you smell of twilight and you're sparkling. Um, which the bronies will be very happy about. Oh, smells so good. It smells so good! I say these are quite good for kids, um, especially if you want them to get into the habit of moisturising after a shower or after a bath, because you can be like, you can, you can glisten if you do. Um, but this isn't like the first, um, like, incarnation of a glittery lotion, you know. Like, we, we talked about that goth fairy thing, like, that, it's kind of the same thing, but I'm a big fan of this, and you just know I'm gonna be using this. And then the other version of it is the Snow Fairy Sparkle Jar. So, just like, just like before, um, you rub it on your skin, tip it upside down, give it a shake, glitter comes out, and you're happy. Um, instead, this, this time you'll just, you'll smell of, uh, you'll smell of Snow Fairy. Shouldn't have rubbed it on that side, but oh well. Ooh, this dust is far finer than the Twilight one. This is like, this comes out like a dusting, whereas, um, it kind of came out in clumps on the Twilight one. Yep, you're gonna smell of, yep, that. You're gonna smell of pink. You're gonna smell of pink. Okay. Um, turns out I missed a couple of the soaps, but they were in different packaging, so you can't blame me. Let's talk about this first of all. This is the Christmas Rocker soap. I don't think they've ever had one called Christmas Rocker. Um, they used to, what was the one that they used to do that I really loved? Reindeer? Rock? Was it called Reindeer Rock or, or something like that? Yeah, Reindeer Rock. That was the one that I really, really liked because that smelt of lingonberry. Um, that was delicious. If they could bring that back, unless it is back and I missed it. Nope, they got rid of Reindeer Rock. What's wrong with you? Anyway, this is the Christmas Rocker Soap. So this is actually a rocking horse. Very cute looking. I love the fade, you know, the orange to yellow. That is very cool. Cocoa butter, which is the main ingredient. It has a very moisturizing soap with coconut oil as well. Uh, dried apricots is the main sort of smell, uh, with tangerine oil, mandarin oil, gardenia. So it's gonna be a bit orangey. Sorry, that was my initial reaction to that. I, well, just because that was not what I was expecting. That is not orangey at all. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. What is that? That's not, that, whatever that is, that's none of these things. Okay, I've gotta look this up, because that, that, that is, I've never smelled anything like that in my entire life. Um, and I don't think I like it, I don't know. Oh, no, it's not getting better. Dried apricots buff the skin and bergamot oil lifts the mood. Doesn't smell anything like Lord of Miss Rule, so. I don't know. Rock and roll around your bedroom with energizing Mexican tangerine oil. Yeah, I don't smell, any, any orange at all. I'm gonna stop smelling that now. That's actually making me quite ill. Um, however, I would recommend going into a store and smelling that, because I guarantee, maybe you'll love it, um, but I will guarantee you haven't smelled anything like that. That is unique. 
Oh, guess I didn't smell that one in the shop. Anyway, uh, the last soap, and I promise this is the last one now. Um, this is brand new. Um, so you guys remember when uh, Oxford Street Store first opened, they had the cold press soaps. They had like the mechanic, and uh, I can't remember the other ones. But the mechanic was the really, really good one because it smelled um, like the comforter, I think. Or did it smell a snow fairy? Well, it doesn't matter because now there is a snow fairy cold press soap. Doesn't smell anything like snow fairy though. What is going on today? Is my nose broken? Wait. This is what you apparently do, by the way. I was taught this by someone in a Lush store. Okay. That doesn't smell a snow fairy at all. Oh, a little bit. Not much though, that's very interesting. So basically, if you don't already know, a cold press soap is done without any heat. Uh, kind of makes sense, really. So it wasn't like melted and stirred and all that. It's actually pressed together um, cold. That's why it's a cold press soap. And with that, um, they last a lot longer. Um, they don't lather up as well as regular soaps, but um, you do get more use out of them. And just because your hands aren't lathering doesn't mean they're not being cleaned. I know that we associate like bubbles with being clean, but just rubbing your hands with this a few times, you're gonna cleanse yourself. And like I said, these last a lot longer than uh, soaps uh, of the same weight, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I I'm a massive fan of cold press soaps. I'm not a fan of the shimmer that this is leaving. I could use this as highlight, wait. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> I have to go out in like half an hour. I'm gonna regret everything. Oh, hell yeah. That was not meant to be Jenna Marbles, I'm so sorry. All you beauty gurus with your, your highlighter brands. <sighs> I look great now. It's not a highlighter, but I'm not saying you can't use it. It's a soap, you're supposed to wash your hands with it. You put it in a soap dish or put it on your face. Okay. Uh, we have a few more products before we get into the uh, the ones that everybody wants to see, which is the bubble bars and bath bombs, obviously. I know that's why you're here. This is the Salt and Peppermint Bark Scrub. I, I, I don't think I liked the smell of this much when I picked it up. I don't really know why I picked it up in that case, but I will show you guys. This is a repeat. They've, they've, I think they've had this last couple of years. I know they had this last year. Um, it doesn't last very long. If you're gonna use this in the shower or the bath, whatever, one of the two. Um, once you're done with it, take it out of the bathroom because the moisture in the air, the humidity will turn this thing to mush. So it's a solid brick. Um, it's it's very, very exfoliating. You get it wet under the shower, you scrub yourself. Um, yeah, it's very minty. Um, you can definitely smell like peppermint. I wanna say peppermint, some sort of mint. And of course, this is gonna show me up because it's not showing that there's, oh, peppermint oil. Okay, okay, I'm not completely broken. Good, very much like toothpaste, but scrubby. Um, you might like that. You might want to smell like toothpaste. Um, I will say that I always like the scrubs. I think they're very, very good. They're very exfoliating. Um, I don't know if they still do a lot of the scrubs that they used to do, like rough with the smooth or um, the rub, rub, rub solid scrub. I prefer the liquid one for that. But um, if you use this sparingly, if you just go over your body once, don't keep going over or you'll just, you'll use this up in one go uh, and you'll end up with very, very red raw skin. But, um, it's a very, very good, it's a very good product. I just don't really like the smell of it. But yeah, don't, don't use this on dry skin. Cause, cause ow. Not that I would know from experience cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stupid. <laughs> Next up we have a brand new bath melt. Again, not sure if this is exclusive to Oxford Street. Um, but I love the design of this. Uh, I just hope it hasn't melted in the time that it's been in my house. Please say you haven't melted. Okay, it hasn't melted, but it has broken. Um, that's definitely more my fault than anyone else's. You can pick these up in store when they're not looking smashed to smithereens. Ironically, I had to run and get another one while I was paying because my last one broke. So these ones are very, very flimsy. Um, they won't last long. Oh, that's, that's, that's making me sad. Okay, so it is, it's supposed to look like this. It's, you know, it's a, it's a Christmas tree. You, you get it? Um, sadly, it kind of broke. It's supposed to be in two halves. Like it's supposed to, slots you get two baths out of it but it has it has broken um but if you take it for what it is two bath melts put into one it's quite cool what is that smell i can smell like butter in there i don't know what kind of butter but i can definitely smell butter so yeah this is the treed bath oil and it doesn't have many ingredients at all which is very interesting cocoa butter is the main ingredient should have guessed that almond oil 
which I didn't hate. Grapefruit oil and tangerine oil. So it's very, I, it's not very citrusy, but there are sweet notes to it. I would say that it's definitely more cocoa butter than anything else. It smells like a toilet paper I once had. That sounds odd. I used a, a cocoa butter toilet. You, do, you don't need to know that. Lush, if you're watching. You don't smell like all toilet paper. So yeah, if you don't know how to use bath oils, basically you take the two halves, you put one half in the bath, it floats and then uh, makes the water soft and oily and it's, it's good for your skin. And finally, before we get to all of the fun stuff, we have two solid lip scrubs. Now these are brand new as well. Um, this whole solid thing is, is, is a real big thing at the minute and I, I'm very much enjoying it. These are both Christmas exclusives. They are named uh, Sugar Plum Fairy. Oh, well, just Sugar Plum. Um, Sugar Plum and Santa Baby. They are solid lip scrubs. So you know those little jars you get, um, which I love very much, as everyone knows. They now do solid versions. So the Sugar Plum Fairy Lip Scrub is now a solid little bar. Um, works just the same. Not sure I can... Okay. Um, definitely doesn't taste as nice as the... Um, it's the sugars. So bear that in mind, maybe don't, maybe don't lick these off. I suffer so you don't have to. And they're nowhere near as exfoliating. No, and you don't, you get nowhere near as much sugar. That's a real shame, because I really wanted to like these. I would say you definitely get more of the oil benefits uh, from these, because obviously with the scrub it's mostly sugar, so you don't really notice like a lot of the nourishment. This is definitely more oil. So yeah, if you if you lick this off, you're basically eating oil. Smells delicious, but don't do that. You're very welcome. And then this one is the Santa Baby, which basically smells of um, like like cola. Um, if you're if you've smelt the Santa Baby lip scrub before, it's exactly the same. It's like dried cherries, coconut oil, muu muu butter. Sugar is the main ingredient. I, I'd be sh I'd be surprised to find any in this. Lime oil. Yeah, it's 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 basically cola. Um, Again, don't recommend uh, licking these off after. Which is annoying because now you've got like sugar on your lips but you don't want to lick them off. I don't think this idea translated, if I'm completely honest. I'm not, I'm not sold on that. Oh, I lied. You've also got these uh, lip tints. Uh, again, Sugar Plum, Sugar Plum Fairy and uh, Santa Baby. So these are the lip tints. Basically uh, a mixture between um, a lip balm and uh, lipstick. This is the, uh, this is the Santa Baby. I didn't really show you then, I'm sorry. Luckily I'm not a beauty guru, so I don't have to. And then the Sugar Plum lip tint is more of a purple, obviously, and that looks like... Okay, that one does not come out as strong and it's a lot more shimmery, as you can see. Um, yeah, both different, both could work. I don't know what this could look like. I don't really, I don't know if I want to find out. Oh! Oh, that came out much more pink than I thought it would. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. All right. You win. And finally, I picked up the Santa Baby Lip Scrub in a jar, the way they're supposed to be. Kind of same smell as always. It smells a little bit different. They always smell different every year. Um, this one, again, is more of a sticky kind of um, syrupy texture. Uh, like the sugar very much clumps to itself. Um, whereas with the bubblegum one, obviously you can just sort of pick it up and you can feel the individual grains of sugar. With this one, it's kind of like a lump that you end up picking up. Um, but I like the, uh, the, the taste of this one because you can lick this one. Anyway, now, without further ado, shall we finally get onto the bath products, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should. So if you're a fan of Lush baths, you're in for a treat with the bubble bars this year. Lush really went all out of the bubble bars. Um, I'm very happy with them. Now, first up, we have this one. This is the Christmas Eve bubble bar. They didn't actually know what this was called in the store um, when I went into Oxford Street. They didn't have a, it was one of the few that didn't have a label. But I would say it's a very, very odd texture on the top. Be very, very careful. Um, I feel like as soon as this gets slightly moist or something, you could, I could just, I could just destroy that. Um, I won't, but it's, you could very much just pat it down. So be very, very careful with this 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 sort of design on top. It smells quite nice, I'm not a massive fan of it. The main sort of smell is jasmine and ylang ylang, so yeah, if you're a fan of jasmine scented stuff, like florally stuff, then you'll love this. I feel like this is gonna turn the bath a beautiful, like glittery blue. I mean, like I say, I feel like, I mean, look at it. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, this one's quite soft in texture, um, which I'm not a massive fan of. I feel like you just sort of 
break this. You could just crush it with your hand, you know. Um, I shall not. I shall not do that. But yeah, it's, it's quite florally. Uh, I feel like it's going to be very, very pigmented. Couldn't tell you. But yeah, that's called Christmas Eve. It's pretty cool. Moving on. This is the Man in the Moon Bubble Bar. Now, when I first saw this one, it's just the way that it looked really struck me. Uh, this is like the first new product I saw when I walked into Oxford Street. It looks incredible. Oh, wait. It looks incredible. What is that? It does have a smell very reminiscent of Golden Wonder. I don't know if it is identical, but it smells quite like it. And obviously the gold would kind of, you know, hint that that's the idea. Again, it's, 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 yeah, you can't play with it as much as the Christmas Eve, which is good. It's got a little uh, bath melt for an eyeball, which again, you're gonna recognize from the, um, oh, I'm sorry. That's the exact same one as from the uh, Monsters Ball from earlier. I see you reusing your assets. But yeah, he's very cute. I think you get like two, maybe three uh, bar, like baths out of that. So um, good stuff. It's got like a very fun like texture, you know, like uh, the fun they do. It's kind of like that, but just a bit firmer. Um, I guess it's probably just the gold sheen they put over it, but it's not like, oh no, it does transfer. I was about to say it doesn't transfer at all, but I was about to put it on my face, but you know what? I'm kind of liking this iridescent look, so I shan't. Lime oil, neroli oil, that, yeah, that's that's where the smell comes from. That's why it smells like Golden Wonder, because it's got a ton of lime oil in it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay, next up is a very cute one, because it reminds me of uh, some old merch that I used to sell back in 2013. This is the My Two Front Teeth Bubble Bar. Isn't it just adorable? <laughs> oh dear. Couldn't... Hmm. I do know that smell, but I couldn't tell you what it is. Not today. What is that? Lavender. No, it's not. Vanilla, neroli... Tonka, this is as far from Twilight as you could get. That's not, that's nothing. That's, hmm. Buck up with vanilla and let worries bubble away. So it's lavender, tonka, vanilla, which just sounds like Twilight, and it's got neroli in it, but it, it smells completely different to Twilight. It has got that sort of maltiness that Twilight has, but it's less lavender focused. It's quite sweet. I think that'll be the neroli coming through and the vanilla. Hmm, I don't know, but I like it. I really, really like it. I'm aware I'm not selling it to you because I'm like, this is not Twilight. But yeah, it does smell really, really nice. Next up, we have the ones that everybody likes to stir around. This is the Magic Wand Bubble Bar. You will have seen this before. This isn't brand new. This comes back every year. It's that one. Um, it's very cute looking. It smells of Snow Fairy. Yep, oh God. Don't really need to go through it. Um, you, you swish it in the water and it makes bubbles. I still recommend don't swish it in the water. Just hold it under a tap, you'll get more bubbles. You'll get more use out of it. But kids will love just stirring it. So, you know, it depends on whether you want to waste your money on your children's smiles, I guess. Next, we have the Magic of Christmas Bubble Bar. Now this is, again, not new. This was around last year and maybe the year before that. Um, it's got a little cinnamon stick as the, uh, as the stirrer. You know, very cute. I think this is the one that I actually forgot to pick up last year, so I don't know if I mentioned this one last year at all. It does smell quite sweet. It smells kind of like marzipan, but it's also got like a sort of earthy texture. I'm not really sure what that's from. Sweet orange oil, almond essential oil. That's why I smelt marzipan. Cinnamon leaf oil. Yeah, so it, it's it's fruity, but then it's got some woody undertones. So that's a very nice smell. That's very nice. Next, we have another standard bubble bar that I kind of forgot about. This is the Christmas Cracker Bubble Bar. Now, this one uh, I think is very prone to very prone to breaking. So when you get it home, please be delicate with it. Otherwise you will end up with a fatality. Um, yeah, it's very fragile in the middle. Um, I think it's because there's a lot of wet uh, compounds. Uh, I don't know, it must be a lot of oils or something in, in the mix uh, that makes the compounds quite soggy. Yeah, you can just like play with this, which I don't like. Um, but it means that you are gonna get a ton of bubbles. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, it's not it's not firm, so they, they really could work on the formula for next year. Um, this is not pleasant to hold, but I mean, you're not gonna, it's just crumbling every, it's just, it's just, it's gone. It's, it's crumbled everywhere. Oh dear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, wasn't quite the right compound mix this year, Lush. I'll be honest with you. Too many oils. You're packing too many oils in your bubble bars. It smells, um, orangey, lemony. Um, it's got a citrus note to it. It's got popping candy in it, so you know it's gonna Christmas cracker, get it? It's gonna be like, you know, cracking, crack, crackle, you know? 
Clever. Bring back cinders. Lemon, lime, neroli. Yep. Um, just a standard citrus smell. Um, but it's got... This is your issue, okay? Uh, cream of tartar, um, corn flour, which is what's making it very powdery and like crumbly in there. Um, cocoa butter, lemon myrtle oil, lime oil, neroli oil. Just, 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 you know? I mean, I'm not gonna tell Lush how to do their jobs. I don't know how to compound, but you know, that's, that's where you're going wrong. It's the corn flour not going with the oil properly. And that's, yeah. Next year, that could be a, that could be a, a cracker, get it? Um, but yeah, that's that's a real shame. That's a real shame. Okay, I've got 20 minutes left on this memory card, so let's let's get going, shall we? Next up is a different type of bubble bar. This is called the Snowman Bubble Room. Now, I'm pretty sure they've actually done away with all of the bubble rooms now. Um, they, they brought out one, I think, last year that was like Father Christmas with a little hat, hat on it, you know? It might have been like last year or the year before that, I don't know. Um, but this is the uh, bubble room this year. Um, it's very adorable. It's got this uh, layer of um, butters and you, you basically break it in half, get two baths out of it. But look at how adorable he is. You smell weird. What do you smell of? You, I don't, I don't, you smell odd. What are you doing? Okay, this is apparently like cream of tartar, corn flour, lemon oil, lemon myrtle oil, shea butter. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of citrus, but it's definitely more butters than anything. You can smell like shea butter and cocoa butter and all that. Yeah, it's got cocoa butter in it as well. Yep, that'll be it. And I will say, respect to Lush, because when they first opened Oxford Street, they had that um, milk bubble bar thing, and it was made of like real milk powder. Um, and, and a lot of people challenged uh, Jack, one of the uh, people who, who invents these products, saying, why are you using dairy? Like dairy is a real bad thing. Um, and to Lush's credit, ever since they've used soya milk powder, and this actually has soya milk powder in it, so that this is a vegan product. Um, I think pretty much everything except um, the honey ones are vegan now, which is great. And obviously, honey's a debate, but um, yeah, I'll always respect Lush for that, changing it from actual milk powder, listening to its consumers, and using soya milk instead. And finally, for the bubble bars, we have the Plum Snow bubble bar. This thing looks amazing. You could definitely get three baths out of this if you're quite stingy, but definitely two. But it's huge. Look at this. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It shares um, the scent with Plum Rain, the shower gel you can get. Um, it's that umeboshi smell. Um, it's, it's really quite nice. I'm not a massive, massive fan of the shower gel, but when I smelt this, I, I really, really like it. I think it just, it's more sweet in this form than it is in the shower gels. I find with the Plum Rain shower gels, uh, depending on which batch you get, they they range from being um, really sweet to not very sweet at all, but this is very, very sweet. You think of the color that your bath is gonna go when you use that. I am, I for one, am very excited. Okay, we've got six more products. Let's do it. So, I'll start off with this one because I'm not sure if this is uh, Christmas or Halloween or Oxford Street exclusive, but I hadn't seen it in stores before, and that's very interesting to me because when I first saw this product, it was at the Lush Summit back in March, April time. This is the Thunder Snow Bath Bomb. It looks like a planet. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Still can't work out that smell though. Popping candy, I don't think that was in here um, when I first used this. Colombian Cocoa Absolute Peppermint Oil. Cream of tartar, gardenia. Um, I wouldn't say it's flowery. I wouldn't say it's much of anything. It's sweet, but it's not really sweet. It's kind of buttery, but it's not really buttery. It's kind of woody, but not really woody. I don't know. It's a very standard, fresh kind of smell. Um, but it is nice. I can imagine that's gonna turn uh, your bath very, very gorgeous. I don't know if that's a Christmas one, because it, it doesn't look very festive to me. Um, but it was there. So if that's an anomaly, I'm sorry. Next up, don't really, I don't really need to explain this one. I think I've kind of covered it when I show you this. The best smelling bath bomb ever, okay? There, I said it. Sorry, Twilight, I've, I've, I went there. Next, we have one called Sherbet Dip. This is a Sherbet Dip bath bomb. Let's have a look at what this one looks like, because I don't remember. There's only so many things you can buy before your memory starts going and they will sort of look the same, you know? Oh, yeah, this is odd. It's like a, like a, tablet looking thing. Maybe it's like, maybe like, oh, sherbet lemon. It looks like a sherbet lemon. It smells like a sherbet lemon. There you go. That's really all I can say about it. I don't know if there's something in the middle that I don't know about. Maybe it's gonna turn the bath like green or something. Cause I'm seeing like some green dust. I, I don't know if that's 
from this bath bomb or another one. Um, I hope there's something in the middle because it feels packed. It feels very dense. So I'm hoping that there's a surprise in there. Shall I drop it and find out? Oh, I can't, I can't do that to myself. Oh no, there is a bit of green in the middle. There you go, there's a little bit of green in the middle. I've ruined it for us all now. It turns the bath like a, a lemony green. Cool, yeah, I'm a fan of that. Nice. Now this one, this is gorgeous, but uh, this is called Christmas Sweater. Um, catering to all markets now. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's got two little reindeer on the front, like a bad Christmas sweater, you know? This smells absolutely amazing. If you miss cinders, this is the closest that we have this year. It's very cinnamony, very woody, but it has got ginger in it. So if you're not a fan of ginger, um, it might come through for you. Um, it's got ginger powder, mustard powder, clove bud oil, coriander seed oil. That's another thing that's gonna set people off. Some people hate coriander, right? Um, but yeah, that's in there. I like it very much. Um, and some lemon oil as well. So it's very, yeah, it's not cinnamon. It must've been clove I was smelling. Yeah, that's clove actually. Of course I'm saying that now. I've had other products with clove in that smelt like this. It's the, I would say that out of all the smells, clove comes through the most, but it's very, very nice. The only way that this could be better for me is if it had um, popping candy in it, because I think that warm smell with with popping candy, like a fire, you know, like Cinder's was. Remember Cinder's? This one, nothing new. We've had it before. I recognize it from the name. You guys can name it before uh, before I tell you. You get points with me. This is the Shoot for the Stars bath bomb. I'm pretty sure this used to look way cooler. I, I'm pretty sure Shoot for the Stars used to look um, dark blue, like a silver sort of swirl in it, you know? Um, and then I think Intergalactic pretty much stole its design. So now it's just a plain minimalist kind of blue with gold uh, melty stars in, which I can also appreciate, you know? Um, nothing beats the original design. That next to Golden Wonder was always amazing. But um, yeah, it, it's nothing new. People have smelled it before. You know what Shoot for the Stars smells like. If you don't, it is Brazilian orange oil, cocoa butter, bergamot, cream tartar, Coconut cream, apparently. That's new. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, um, it doesn't really smell fruity though. It's not like a citrus smell. It's more of just a, a clean smell. For me, there's like three distinct lush smells. There's sweet, um, woody, and clean, you know. Um, and then twilight, which has its own category because it's great. You know, it's, it's gonna be one of those things. And I would say that's more clean than anything else. And finally, we're ending on a rather festive note. Um, not a highlight for me, but I know that many of you will be very excited about this. Um, because I don't think we've ever had something even remotely like this before. So, you can tell from the look of it, it's uh, a jelly bomb, because it's got those little uh, circles on it. But it's pink, and it's out for Christmas. So, for those of you who have always wanted a snow fairy bath bomb, here you go. Okay, so it's like, it's a jelly one. And if you're not a fan of the jelly, then this, this is not for you. But remember that the jelly does melt um, after a few minutes in the hot water. Uh, it's just, it gives you long enough to rub it into your skin and make your skin smooth and then it goes away. You can overlook that texture that some people don't like. It's kind of like frog spawn on the top of the, the, the pond, you know? Um, kind of like algae, if that makes sense. It's like sodium alginate, get it? But um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's very pink. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's very, very sweet. It's got a little star pattern on the top. Mine doesn't look very good. But um, if you're a fan of Snow Fairy and you you just can't get enough of that smell, then now you may bathe in it. Uh, oh Lord, don't come near me though, please. That's it. Um, that's what I got for the Christmas range. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, as, as with um, all haul videos that I'm doing from now on, I will be making a donation to a local food bank um, because I just, you know, showing off things that I've bought with my money. It's it's a very kind of vapid video genre and I'm very aware of that. So um, I'm just gonna give back. So uh, yay me, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, boost my, I'm gonna shut up. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, there were some ups and some downs this year. It's not the strongest year for Lush's Christmas range, I think. Um, I think they're focusing a little bit too much on the jelly bombs. Um, Golden Wonder makes a wonderful return. Um, we can't always hope for, you know, the old stuff to come back. Why can't we just have this and that? Although, you know, I wouldn't say no to Cinders, but some of the, uh, there was, there was some bits that I forgot to pick up, like the, uh, the silver star bath, bubble bath thing, melt thing, that's, that's back again. Um, I forgot to pick that up. But, um, I just, 
I just feel like there wasn't much of a range of smells this year. I don't know if that's just me. Um, the Halloween range is quite small, I think, for what it could have been. But overall, there were some good, there were some good moments. Um, there were a couple of duds with the soaps, but yeah, um, pretty happy. I just think they need to chill with the, the orange and lime, you know? Yeah, they go great together, but maybe, you know, suppress yourself, Jack. Just st st slow down. Um, those lip scrubs, those solid ones, complete dud for me. I'm very sad about that. But let me know after watching this extremely long video what your favourite products in this video were. What would you like to see make a comeback? What kind of smells would you like Lush to incorporate in the future? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, and until next time, I shall catch you later. Right, cool. On to year five.